If you think reading more books will change your life, you're overlooking the one thing that truly turns knowledge into results. Throughout my years of experience, both as a peer-reviewed academic researcher and as a successful entrepreneur, I've learned that true knowledge doesn't come from books, but instead from something simple you can start implementing today. In this video, I'm gonna discuss the process we all need to go through in order for the books we read to turn into knowledge, and that process begins by understanding that knowledge is experience over my years of doing academic and test prep coaching, I noticed a lot of similarities between how most people read and consume content and how students learn or fail to learn. You see, early on in my experience with this industry, I developed a series of steps for each question type that students could follow in order to get questions correct every single time. I thought I was being pretty clever. However, although my students would clearly understand what the steps were, they would still get the answers wrong again and again. In other words, they understood the theory, but they couldn't implement it in practice. Similarly, as I was working with and training sales teams in my other business, it would be a common occurrence to see a salesperson get up in front of the room and do a perfect presentation, the perfect delivery, but still they hadn't made a commission in the past few months. Well, what was going on here? Well, again, there was that massive gap between understanding the theory and putting it into practice. But as we'll see, there was a simple solution, a solution I found by understanding how I myself was reading and consuming content. You see, early on in my entrepreneurial journey, I read all the classic self-help and success books. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Eker, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey, and so many others. But then I would look at my bank account and, well, yeah, most of the time I was afraid to look at my bank account. In other words, I also had a massive gap between understanding the theory and putting it into practice. Do you feel like you have similar gaps? Well, don't get me wrong here. I'm not saying we shouldn't read books at all in order to help us build our personal growth and achieve success. Instead, I'm only saying they're a starting point. Yes, my test prep students needed to build an intuition for how to approach each problem, but they still needed to have some roadmap for what to pay attention to, and the steps I originally laid out for them did achieve that. And yes, the salespeople I was training needed to get out and actually do sales appointments with real people, but if they hadn't first developed some foundational knowledge, they would have been wasting their time. So we do need the theory, but in my experience, if you've been reading self-help books for a while and still haven't gotten the results you're looking for, whether that's financially, professionally, romantically, or whatever, it's highly likely likely you're too focused on reading books and not focused enough on action. But not just any type of action. It's a type of action consisting of three specific steps that helped me go from broke and constantly stressed to debt-free and stress-free, and we'll explore these steps as well as how you can use them to change your own life. And we can sum up these steps as read with a goal, act with precision, review with humility. Let's start with the first step, read with a goal. Notice this step isn't simply about reading. I mean, we can all read in multiple ways and for multiple purposes. We can read for leisure, we can read out of simple curiosity, I mean, I do that. But if we want to read for the purpose of actually changing the quality of our lives in some way, these reading purposes aren't enough. So when I say read with a goal, what I really mean is read content that is specifically relevant to the goals you're pursuing. Back then, for me, I was horrible at financial management. So bad, actually, that I actively avoided looking at my bank account and tracking my finances because I was simply too afraid to face the truth. Sound familiar at all? Well, deep down, I knew that this financial issue wasn't really a financial issue. It was a self-confidence issue. I had a limiting belief that I simply couldn't manage money or even make money. And so I abandoned the approach to reading I had at the time, which was essentially to read any book I heard was good and instead purposely sought out books to help me with this specific issue. One of the books I read at that time was The Four Agreements by Miguel Ruiz, and two of his key points struck me. Be impeccable with your word. 
and always do your best. Another book I read at that time was The Five Levels of Leadership by John Maxwell. And a key takeaway I learned from that book at the time was that I was what he called a level one leader. A person who simply wanted results from people around him, but didn't build enough relationship with them to get their permission to do so. Before this time, I would have simply read the books, learned these concepts and lessons, and then would have subconsciously felt something along the lines of, ooh, what great concepts I learned. I guess I've experienced personal growth now that I've read these. I feel good about myself for reading them. And be honest with yourself, is this a thought process you're engaged in right now? Well, this time was different. I engaged in step two of this process, act with precision. Now, it's important to take action on what we read. Just like my test prep students and the salespeople I worked with, their core problem definitely was not enough action. Theory plus experience equals knowledge. This is true. However, it is possible to make a huge mistake here. I realized at that time that I would end up being overwhelmed if I tried to implement every single idea from these books I was reading. So instead, I committed to implementing one key idea per book. That's it. From the four agreements, I decided to implement be impeccable with my word. What this looked like for me was finally creating a simple spreadsheet of my finances, income on one side and expenses on the other, and writing in a plan for how to deal with every expense. Once I wrote it down, I told myself I must commit to actually do what I write down. This was me being impeccable with my word. From the five levels of leadership, I decided to take one small step out of being a level one leader and try my best to become what Maxwell calls a level two leader. What this looked like for me was holding my tongue when I had an opinion. Whenever I was having a conversation with someone, I told myself, I will at least do my best to actively listen, and instead of formulating a response in my mind, simply respond based on how I could best help them. Are either of these principles something you've ever consciously tried to implement? If so, you'll know it's easier said than done. But you might think picking out these specific principles to implement and essentially disregarding everything else in the book is either such a small thing or worse, actively disingenuous. But when we do this enough, people start to respond to us differently. And people did start to respond to me differently. I no longer avoided family friends who had lent me money, but instead somehow conjured up the courage to face them, listen to their concerns, and come up with a way forward together. Teammates of mine started to feel heard and appreciated, and best of all, I started to feel more influential. Like I could finally deal with my problems, and not only that, achieve any kind of success I wanted. The power of choosing one idea to implement cannot be underestimated. For instance, Fast forward a few years later, and I discovered the amazing book Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss, which is a must read if you want to level up your communication skills. There are dozens of great hacks and recommendations in this book, but I distinctly recall the impact I was able to make on my communication skills by implementing this one small concept. Instead of telling someone, I think XYZ is the case, when in conversation with them, tell them, it seems that XYZ is the case. This small difference, it seems versus I think, did wonders for helping me avoid coming across to people as egotistical or stubborn. Instead, do you see how this simple phrase can create a sense of neutrality and help people receive our message better? Ask yourself, what are you reading now or are planning on reading, and how can you better refine your reading process into a specific task you can take action on in the real world? Don't try to do too much at once, just implement one thing. And that brings us to the last step in this process review with humility. As I started to increase my income at the time from $13.25 per hour to $20 per hour to $60 per hour to $150 per hour and beyond, one key that really helped me stay on the right track with my growth was to remind myself I don't know everything. In fact, in proportion to all the knowledge out there, it's just a fact that I know almost nothing. And so I still have to keep learning. That key realization made me appreciate the fact that I consistently had to go back and review what I learned. But how should we review? Well, when we read something from a self-help or success book, we have to ask ourselves two key questions. One, how well am I executing on this concept? And two, should executing on this concept still be my focus and priority, or do I need to shift my focus? You see, it's a well-known fact that we easily forget 
forget what we learn unless we review it consistently. This is what's called the forgetting curve. However, at the same time, as we're implementing concepts and ideas from self-help books, what we're practicing eventually should become a habit, at which point we should graduate, so to speak, to the next level or next goal we have. So how do we tell the difference? Well, I make it a regular habit of going back through books I've already read and looking at my annotations I've made in these books just to see if anything catches my eye that I believe I need to review or reread again. Again, based on my current personal growth goals. I also take notes on books I read and review those, and in the past year, I've also made heavy use of a platform called Shortform, and you can find out more about this in the pinned comment below. And this helps me quickly review books I've already read to see if there's a a concept I need to revisit or practice again. And as we review, something almost magical seems to happen. The information seems different, sometimes completely so to the point that we wonder, is this the same book I read? But the reality is the information isn't different. We're different. By taking that second step in the process, that purposeful and targeted action, we gain new knowledge from actual experience. And so the words on the page we didn't quite understand before take on a profound meaning. And honestly, this whole process itself demonstrates the value of personal growth. The more we learn, if we're actually learning that is, the more humble we should become. And it's through this kind of balanced humility that we not only make a difference in our own lives, but also in the lives of others. If you wanna keep leveling up your critical thinking to make a massive impact in your life and also in the lives of others, then be sure to watch this next video.